hello and welcome to this week's angling blog this week you join us on the banks of the river seven and we're fishing the bolo for silvers before we get into the vlog i'd just like to thank everybody who watched last week's vlog where we went in search of those barbel on the river seven and had a fantastic day's fishing it really means a lot when you leave those nice comments and it's great to hear how you guys are getting on and answer any questions that you've got so if you've got any questions about any of the fishing in the vlog leave it in the section below and i'll do my best to either answer the question or put it in a future vlog through last week's blog i updated you guys that the trip to france this week was sadly cancelled but i decided to make the most of the opportunity and keep my week off work and get out fishing as much as i could I really do enjoy making the content for the channel putting the videos together editing them and sharing the adventures with you guys and then you know chatting in the comments about your fishing I really do enjoy the whole thing that comes with this YouTube channel but I did realize last week that it has been a long time since I actually just went fishing and left the camera at home and just went fishing and didn't vlog it so in the early part of this leave I decided to just go on a couple of fishing sessions take the camera just to capture a couple of shots but certainly not do any recording for the vlog for the channel on Friday I headed to the secret lake with just some sweet corn and a couple of the beaten iron boilies from Hinders put a couple of spots of the bait out cast the two rods out and just sat back with the sun just coming over the trees and enjoyed the session and how about that for a start the sun just coming on the water and a nice scaly carp in the net in the other end of the lake I thought it was an excellent opportunity to see what the whole lake has to offer and what it showed was as you can see on screen now the quality of the fish was a lot higher all four fish that you can see on camera now were over the 15 pound mark and as you can see amongst them there were some stunning fish I really did enjoy chilling out that day on the bank it was weird not vlogging it but I had some great fun and it really set me up for the next day when I hit the banks of the river fishing the bolo for roach again leaving the camera at home fed the swim heavy with hemp and maggot and really attacked the swim and I really enjoyed putting together that net of roach it is something that I'm going to try and record a video on for the channel in the coming weeks the Sunday I headed out with my little girl Abby and we had some great fun on the banks of the river seven I'm not saying the fishing was slow but we had plenty of time to make this then that you're about to see now not saying the fishing's slow but we have had time to make this epic minecraft house from all the driftwood that's lying about and i've got to say it is epic it really was fun just to spend the afternoon on the banks with our abby listen to her stories from school and try and catch a fish it didn't take too long for the chub to come along and what a stunning chub it was three pound 14 ounces a beaming smile on her face and one happy dad it was a lovely session on the bank and as we left you could just see the sun coming down a nice drive home and an enjoyable session on the bank hopefully creating some lovely memories that she won't forget that brings us to the end of the little catch up i hope you enjoyed the vlog and you join me now on the banks of the river seven where we've been in search of those silvers on the bolo if you do enjoy the video please drop it a like and share it with your friends and i'll catch us all next week Hello and welcome to this week's angling blog. This week you join me on the banks of the River Severn. We're on the Lim Anglers card at Montford Bridge and we're going to fish the bolo for basically anything that swims. It's a beautiful autumn day. All the trees now are really turning and it's beginning to feel like that time of year when it's time to get the bolo and the stick floats out and target those silvers. Full of optimism as always and with stick float fishing you just never know what's going to come along. So let's have a look at the setup and the swim that we're going to fish today. So the rod that I'll be using today is my 17 foot Preston Innovations carbon active rod. Again, not knowing the depth of the swim, this rod will cover all scenarios. And when you're fishing the bolo, having that extra length of rod is always ideal. I've got that down to a Corum axis reel. On there, there's four pound, four ounce float fish. Down to the business end, I've got a three gram Dave Havel Bolo. So that's down to a bulk shot, an Olivet from Dinsmore's and a couple of BB shot. 
just to get that bait down. That's where I'm going to be stood today. As I said on a recent chub video, every tuft is a peg when it comes to river fishing. So looking at the river, there was a few fish topping in the whole area this morning. You can see it's got a nice even pace under your feet. There's not much break in it all the way down, which suggests there's not many snags. You've got some features on the far bank, a snag upstream. Of course, no Danny's angling blog would be complete without the swans. And downstream, you've got a sunken tree. And my uncle, who's fishing just above it, looks very inviting, that tree. So hopefully we might see you know, some nice chub, maybe. That's the hope. But today, really, anything that swims, we're going to be fishing maggot. Bait-wise, I'm going to be putting me bait up here, the maggot. And I'm going to be putting me hemp just slightly downstream. We'll have a look now about how I approach the swim. And the first thing that I do with plumbing up and how I go about it when I arrive on the peg. So the first thing that I do when I arrive on the peg is just have a quick plumb about. It's about the line that I'm hoping to go down today. And you can see there, it's just about right. You can just see the float sitting on the top of the water. And then have a quick, just flick past it, just to have a general idea of the contours. I'm not too bothered about the actual depth you can see that it's not much difference between where I was before and a few more yards out and then because I'm fishing the bottle today I'm not planning on going too far down the swim but it is always worth just to have a cast down and you can see the float there is still showing above the water by the same distance so what it tells me in three casts I've got an even river in front of me i've got a bit of a range that i can go over so i've not got to be super accurate to be at the right depth and if i do go downstream i've got quite an even depth below me and that for me is literally the plumbing up done three casts and i know what i need to know to begin fishing the swim so bait wise for the session got about two and a half pints of cheshire particle hemp going to be an important bait today for holding them fish when we're fishing the bolo we've got a couple of pints of maggot in there and some more in there as well and maggot is a bait that is quite light so we're gonna to have to be careful how we feed it because fishing the bolo we want them fish on the bottom and that's where you're going to target them with the bolo that's the whole point of fishing that float that you can get them on the bottom where that hemp is so you've got to feed high enough up that your maggots are actually on the bottom over your hemp and one thing mr and mrs swan are going to have to vacate because that's round about where i'm going to be casting Go on the second shot downward into the first fish, not massive, it's a small little daze. And in those early stages, it's all about just trying to get them fish into your area. So it's a big river, you can see downstream, there's a lot of area to work with. You can see there, right on where I put that hemp, it's a slightly better one. And a good start really, you know, what's that? Four casts and we've had two fish. We keep that hemp going in, because that's the bait that's gonna keep them fish on the bottom, in them bottom layers. The maggots will naturally draw them up, which is not exactly what we want. We wanna keep that bait on the bottom. And that's a proper fish that is. You can see there, much better fish and a bend in the rod and the perch but you can see there the progression in 
just them few bites we've gone you know up in size each time we've had that small little fish and then we've had this perch so with the maggots being a bait that's going to draw the fish up what I'm going to do is just feed really heavy every now and again with it so you're getting a big plush of bait going down too much for the fish to really come up and compete each time you're casting it's kind of like the opposite way of thinking about how you would normally feed you'd normally feed hemp you know every couple of casts and maggots every cast but the thinking today is the complete opposite I want to get some of that maggot down on the bottom but my main bait is going to be that hemp to keep them down on the deck where that bollow's going through that's the plan and like I say when people ask about stick float fishing and rivers you've always got to have a method that you're you know or a way of thinking and there's certainly one or two of these about these little small chublets so I wonder if daddy chub is hiding under them trees and autumn is a beautiful time to be on the river you've got all the colours and the reflections the trees that are turning you've got that nip in the air in the morning but it's still warm enough to get away with wearing a t-shirt the sun has that little bit of heat to it still and it's just lovely to be on the bank the birds singing and that's what river fishing is all about just being the only people on the bank let's say my uncle's with us today but just peace, quiet, just a beautiful place to be. So this is a venue that we have fished before and I'll put a link on the top of the screen now. We fished it once before, I think it was last year or the year before. And we had a, a fun day with a few bites and on that day a few chub did show up a few chublets so i'll put a link to the top of the screen now if you want to check that video out so i'm just getting plenty of bites as you can see over that hemp which is a good sign you know, reading the swim at the moment, the fish are responding to that hemp going in because all the bites are coming down of where I'm feeding the hemp. Obviously that maggot is helping, but early signs are is that a lot of the bites are coming down. If you look at that reflection of that tree there, it's over that where I'm getting the bites and I'm putting the hemp just above it. Um, one thing that I am worried about is Mr. Pike. This margin down here full of these reeds looks perfect for him. And the River Severn, when I have fished it on the stick float, really has been a river where pike have been a feature of the day. So I'd be amazed if one doesn't visit us today, they normally do. But this margin down here just looks perfect for them. Just slowly starting to get one or two better stamp fish with more regularity not really having any of them tiny little fish that we were getting before the swim has gone really quiet and i did think that it could be a pike and just bringing that dace in you've seen there the <laughs> pike come clean out the water and the swim had gone really quiet and you can just tell when you're getting them days steady and it goes really quiet you can tell as I always say don't get excited because <laughs> you very rarely get them in but it's a proper bend in the rod and normally what happens is they let go or they bite through your line but if you get really lucky you can hook the pike but 
uh, yeah I very much doubt we're going to get it in but you can see the pike down there there he is and who knows we might get lucky with him luckily the hook has transferred into the pike and we've managed to get it in just shows what you can get in on one seven bottom you know one pound seven ounce bottom and we managed to get him in the net what we'll do is although he's been a pain we'll give him a bit of a rest in the edge and we'll take a look at him very rare you get him in very rare so while he's been thrashing in the net the line has snapped but you can just see there how lucky you've got to get it's hooked him on a bit where there's been no teeth you hook anywhere else and it's almost game over and there we go there's a closer look at that pike I say sometimes you look in and if you manage to get that hook somewhere where there's no teeth you can get them in but it's very rare about what six seven pound pike maybe but proper bend in the rod and just shows what you can get in on that one pound seven ounce bottom we're getting back straight away because obviously it's a warm day so that pike really did kill the action it's been a quiet last hour of the session and that's how it can be sometimes with pike but then out of the blue had this nice perch to end the session so we'll take a look at the final net and we'll see how we've done